Hi everyone. This is a little update today on um, the disenchantment topic and uh, how I uh, continue to progress with um, what I'm noticing as the disenchantment uh, and I'm getting all the little little last pieces of disenchantment out of my system but um, just also how my whole energetic system is kind of rebooting with dis with enchantment energy um, as I kind of perfect being clear of this disenchantment energy and it's quite phenomenal to me what's happening to me um, number one I think that those of you who are participants in my cosmic corner program uh, I think that this disenchantment energy that it has in I believe it's infected a huge percentage of the population and it's probably much stronger and I doubt it's much stronger in some countries than it is in others but I think that it has been playing a role those of you who have been following Cosmic Corner in the problem with purple I've been talking for a number of months and especially this month I commented very specifically on it's critically important for us to start raising purple and and using all the tricks that we know to, to raise our color what I call color reflectivity uh, of this particular color kind of like if, if you imagine yourself as a prism um, the bulk of the human population is not reflecting um, that color through the prism now it's interesting to me because purple can't actually reflect through a prism I did some research on the color that I and found some stuff I didn't know before about this particular color and it, it's so interesting interesting that it would relate to enchantment disenchantment the lack of disenchantment would affect purple uh, and it is affecting purple I believe um, purple is not considered a real color it's not a color that when you split light through a prism um, that you can create you can create violet but you can't create purple purple is a perceived color only and it is it is achieved by um, our eyes our eyes actually mix the frequencies they they create a blend between the colors of red and blue and they create the color purple or what we perceive as the color purple but in nature uh, uh, purple is not called a spectral color uh, and uh, it's very very interesting because when you think of the meanings of purple if you look up what you know the historic uh, um, and symbolic meanings of this color it means things it, it is the color of magic enchantment illusion it's also interestingly the color of wealth uh, the color of nobility um, some of those very powerful literally powerful colors or associated with powerful people uh, in, in the past uh, purple was considered such an important color such a noble and and valuable color or, or um, special color that uh, Queen Elizabeth I wouldn't allow anyone other than uh, people who were very close to the in the royal family directly or very close to the royal family to even wear the color and where that came from is that purple the way the color was created um, or the way it was created physically you could you can create purple physically in nature you can't create it naturally through the splitting of light it has to be done through perception but which is fascinating because that's kind of like illusion right there um, but anyway the reason it was so linked to um, wealth and nobility uh, is that it, it was very rare uh, the way that it was procured was actually through this uh, the type of muscle type I don't know if they were muscles directly but that type of thing like a muscle clam that type of thing and and the ink was was uh, or the blood of the the creature was was sucked out and that's where purple came from very 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 rare so anyway the long and the short of it is this is that I believe that this disenchantment energy that has been infecting we'll use the word infecting the human population very heavily for the last Mm, like I said in the other video um, probably the, or somewhere in 2000 late 2013 early 2014 and then so 2014 15 16 we've got about three years of infection now I am finding as I do more research even on myself and certainly as I investigate other people's energy systems um, I'm finding that that this this um, fall into disenchantment or the acquisition of disenchantment has actually been going on for many of you out there 
for quite a lot longer than three years. As I mentioned in the other video, it started stockpiling in my system in this lifetime about six years ago. But my girlfriends, it was far, much farther back uh, with them and in other people that I'm checking. I have also now found uh, past life belief codes that actually harbor um, disenchantment and clearing those codes has been very interesting. Inherited belief codes that have harbored that, that I acquired from my ancestors that are harboring that particular frequency what I can tell you about how I'm feeling is that the best way I can describe it, and I, I forgot that I used to feel this way almost all the time, and I haven't been feeling this way because I've been disenchanted. But it's, it's, it's the feeling of if you've ever fallen in love, it's that. It's the feeling, that magical, amazing, super energizing feeling of being in love. Um, and your heart, it, it almost like hurts. Now I'm currently not in love with anyone. It's just, this is a natural response that's happening to my body where I'm feeling it all the time because I have removed this disenchantment. So, um, I, I encourage you to really pay attention to this subject I th and, and get in there and, and do what you can to remove, uh, get yourself out of any entanglement with this energy. Uh, you, you, you certainly have your own, um, belief codes that caused your initial disenchantment reaction. You need to clear those belief codes. You have acquired disenchantment energy from other people. You need to figure out from who and you need to give it back. Uh, I, I would highly recommend that you start doing very strategic steps to boost enchantment energy in your system, restore that and other related energies in your system. It's kind of like once you remove the disenchantment, you do start to have this, this reboot of enchantment naturally. But but um, definitely I've been trying some uh, kind of tricks to, to really elevate that frequency so that I'll go into resonance with it to see if I'll hold the resonance with it. And it's true. I've been doing things like last night I watched the movie en Enchanted. It's a Walt Disney movie and it gave me a major boot. So, you know, major booster and the booster hasn't gone away. Uh, usually, you know, you, you watch a movie and, and you feel, you know, uplifted for a short time and then it goes away, but this has not gone away. So you can strategically do things to boost the level of enchantment energy. So it, so I'm finding out, um, uh, uh, in your system and, and really elevate this, this wonder, wonderful feeling in your heart. The other thing that I've, uh, observed is that my heart electromagnetic fields. Now, you know, uh, those of you who are new to the whole Senzar thing, go on to my Heart Smarts page in the, in, in, on my website, SedonaPortal.com, and you'll read about the importance of the electromagnetic field of the heart. Well, for the last three years, I think that this um, uh, it buildup of disenchantment in my system and its effect on purple and another really important frequency called negative horizontal green. It's, you could consider it the, the love frequency, the, pe the pure love frequency, the, the, um, the, the uh, peace frequency, pure peace frequency of the planet itself. And that's, that's being inhibited by this, our capacity to merge with it, our capacity to reflect it from ourselves is being inhibited by this disenchantment energy. It's not the only inhibitor, but it's a major player. So it's very interesting. But I noticed over the last few days, I've been checking my heart electromagnetic field. Now, typically for the last few years, I've been needing to manually um, upgrade my electromagnetic field every morning. I would wake up and I'd find that the field was significantly collapsed. And I was blaming that exclusively on earth energy energy activity, which does happen to be very intense and cosmic activity right at this time. But interestingly, and so I do my little reboot, it would mainly disorganize my subtle organizing energy fields. And many of you know about those. And if you don't get more involved with the Senzar training and you'll learn more about this stuff. But anyway, I would organize my subtle organizing energy fields, which is easy enough to do. My heart EMF would go back up. But I, I, I would also have to periodically throughout the day do these little um, corrections with the electromagnetic field of my heart. And again, there, there's many, many things that can ding the electromagnetic field of your heart, but I was finding that it was just getting um, kind of crumpled or, or, or uh, you know, doing nose diving for no lo logical reason at all. And, and again, I was very much putting that on cosmic and earth energy stuff, which certainly have played a role. But what's interesting, since 
I have cleared the disenchantment energy, and I haven't even cleared every single speck of it, is that I've been awakening with, on a scale of zero to 100% of the uh, condition of my electromagnetic field of my heart, it's been over 70%, which is very good with, for anyone on the planet, um, without any effort on my heart part at all. So it's almost like the earth energies are still there. I know, they're very intense. The cosmic activity that's going on right now is very intense. But since I've removed this disenchantment energy, it appears that that's not affecting me at all. I, I feel it in, in body uh, signals signatures, but it's not affecting my heart EMF. So that is crucially important because that is so vital to the manifestation process, that one field in that's generated by the heart. Uh, anyway, if, if you don't know about it, go onto my website, read the Heart Smarts section, print out the free little uh, article that's on that page where you can attend easy steps to boost your heart EMF. And we're going to add number 11, get rid of all disenchantment energy and get back on the uh, into the alignment with enchantment uh, get back into alignment with higher re reflectivity of purple higher reflectivity of um, uh, this this negative horizontal green uh, which is a frequency that by the way is created um, all the activity, and, and many of you know about my, my journeys, you know, my, my stuff that I do in Ireland that I've been doing for the last 20 years, where I investigate these Neolithic sites and the type of energies that are being, um, that integrate or, or interact with the sites and what happens as an outcome. Well, the, the number one outcome of the interaction of all the, these uh, energies, these subtle energies at certain times of year with these uh, giant Neolithic structures like, the, like New Grange in Ireland you know, in, in, uh, not too far outside of Dublin in County Meath and La Croix in, in County Meath. Um, uh, these uh, particular uh, structures, the end result of whatever goes on in those structures energetically is the frequency of negative horizontal green, which is a hugely, again, stimulating, healing, um, um, peace, pure love type frequency. So get on the bandwagon with this clearing disenchantment out of yourself, raising enchantment energy. Energy. If you want to dive deeper into this, I'm doing a special workshop. I put it together right now because this is so important. Uh, we're not going to even wait a month for me to get back to Ireland. I'm putting it together now for you. If you want to get onto it and dive deeper into this and get your enchantment energy up right now, um, take a look at the workshop that I'm doing on Saturday and enroll in that. Uh, that's your fast track to rebooting your enchantment. So um, anyway, that's it for today. Just wanted to give you a little update and some extra tidbits on what's going on with this enchantment, disenchantment situation. Bye for now.